Today we're going to talk about Spring Boot and how to implement gzip compression for our web pages and REST API services. So let's dive in. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new Spring Boot project. I'm using IntelliJ, so I will go ahead and use the Spring Boot Initializer built-in in IntelliJ Ultimate. Okay, so I'm going to go through here. And we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this Spring Boot gzip. Okay, I'll put it in my development directory. I will use Java. I'll use Maven. I'll give it a reverse domain name for my consulting company. I use Java 17. We're going to make a jar. I'm going to use Spring Boot 3.1.6. I'm going to add Lombok in here. And I'm just going to use Spring Web. And we're just going to set up a basic controller. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new window for my project. Okay, now we can see our new project. First thing I typically do is run the project just to make sure it was all configured and set up. I'm going to enable my Lombok. And I can see it's listening on port 8080. The first thing I'm going to do is go through in the source directory for the main resources and the application properties. I'm actually going to set my server.port equals 8080. That way we know exactly what port the server is listening on. Okay. Great. Now we got that out of the way, we can actually go through and we can create a basic service. So let's start that. We'll have a basic controller in here. I'm going to create a package for a controller. And in that controller, I'm going to create a Java class. That's going to be gzip controller. I'm going to call that a REST controller. You use annotations, REST controller. I'm going to add in SL4J. We get that from the long block. I'm going to set a request mapping and we're going to set our base API slash V1 for everything. I'm going to go in here and set up a get mapping. And this is just going to be gzip test. I'm going to create a public class. We're trying to string here initially. I'm going to call it gzip test. Okay, and so right now, this is just a basic test environment and we're returning a empty string. Let's go through and let's some, add some content in here. And I should be able to add some gibberish and have that highly compressible, but let's go through for the heck of it for no particular reason, for no optimized purpose. And let me just create a string in here that I'm gonna return. And I'm going to call this return data. And I will be very inefficient. I'm not caring about how I'm going to create the string, but I'm going to have a for loop here. And I'm going to create a whole lot of data in here. So this is 10,000 lines. I'm going to add in the string. Again, a simple for loop in here. And I'm going to say my return data equals return data plus some sample data here. And in this sample data, I'm going to have my name, Tom J, Java developer, is a long line, I hope, 
lots of data. I'm using a string, but should use a string buffer for performance. Okay, again, don't really care about performance right now. We want to keep things at a par parity level here. So I'm now going to take this and run this, and we're going to call this API. So let's return the data. Let's restart this again. Okay, let's run this and let's open up Chrome and take a look at it. The size we can see is 1.3 meg. Let's go enable the compression again. We'll restart it. We'll refresh this page. Now we can see one from 1.3 3 meg down to 4.8k. So that's a significant change for the compression. So that's all we have to do to add compression into gzip. This is something that I do for APIs and web pages. It makes a massive, massive difference. I'm doing a lot of work nowadays with chat GPT and Gen AI. And I'm getting much, much larger sets of data now. So this is a huge help and will help you add a significant amount of performance. Hope you learned a little bit. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot on YouTube. I have a lot on Medium as well. I'll put this code on my GitHub channel. Thank you.